Good morning, everyone. Um, sort of took us a little while here to get uh, ready for this press conference. Um, we have to leave this room by 11, so we will be uh, quick in our presentation, and we'll be glad to take questions after the uh, press conference. The U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations, USMO, is the largest coalition of national, regional, and local Muslim organization. It is proud to announce today that the response to the one million voters drive it proclaimed in December 2015 and get out vote campaign across the nation has been overwhelmingly successful. Volunteers, member organizations, and local communities have responded by organizing voter registration booth at more than 2,500 mosques, 500 schools, and many community centers nationwide. And during the special holiday season, as our National Muslim Voter Registration Day on Eid al-Adha, September 12, 2016, reports from various cities across the United States indicate that thousands of new Muslim voters have registered this year, surpassing any previous year in the history of the community. We believe there are two factors that have contributed to the success of this campaign and the high turnout of newly registered voters. One is due to the hard work of many Muslim organizations, activists, imams, and community leaders, especially youth. The second is largely due to the highly charged political environment and attack on the Muslim community and other minorities and the serious concern over the sharp increase of hate crimes on the Muslim community. The large concentrations of Muslim voters in key swing states in, such as Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, and Virginia, the American Muslim population is positioned to tip those elections and to determine who will be the next president of the United States. That's what we believe. According to the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE, there were an estimated 500,000 Muslim voters in 2012. Based upon the strong response compared to previous years, we believe we have reached our target goal of 1 million voters. Moreover, according to CARE's October election survey, 86% of registered Muslim voters intend to vote in this year's presidential election. The massive outpouring of support and participation in the campaign illustrates the seriousness of this election year among the American Muslim community and their determination and dedication to be part of this year's critical election. Currently, the U.S. Council of Muslim Organization is offering only estimates. These estimated numbers are the finest statistics as the final statistics will not be available until after the election due to the different voting, uh, voter registration deadlines in each state. So after the election, we will be able to give more solid numbers uh, with respect to the newly voter registered. We are very pleased with the results so far of this campaign because it shows decisively how American Muslims are contributing members of society and part of the social fabric of this country. Thank you. I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Nihad Awad, the Executive Director of the Council on American Islamic Relations. Thank you, Thank you Osama. <clears throat> Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Nihad Awad, the National Executive Director of CARE. Spelling of my name, N-I-H-A-D-A-W-A-D. Uh, so I would like to echo what uh, uh, Osama just said about the importance of the American Muslim uh, votes. Uh, let me just give you a quick uh, background. Uh, the Muslim American community has been um, highly engaged in the election process since the year 2000. In the year 2000, the majority of American Muslim voters voted for the Republican ticket because of the uh, uh, war on Iraq and the invasion of Afghanistan, the erosion of civil liberties of the Muslim community, 
Um, the support for the Republican Party has dwindled. And uh, then in the year 2000, African Americans uh, voted for Democrats. So there was a split in the American Muslim vote. However, in the past years, we have seen that the Muslim uh, voting trend has been consolidating and they vote in unison. Um, today, we believe, as Osama said, that the American Muslim voters number more than one million. Uh, CARE has developed a database of 825,000 registered voters in the past uh, two months. Uh, we obtained a list of 1.5 million, 750,000 of Muslim American eligible voters were not registered. We have been reaching out to them through various efforts, uh, voter registration, education, awareness, and also robocalls, utilizing key and respected members of our community, including elected officials and also Gold Star Father Khizr Khan. Uh, robocalls have been um, um, uh, uh, done, and uh, we have been reaching out to hundreds of thousands of Muslim voters. So we believe that, in total, American Muslim votes this year uh, um, exceed one million. And the importance of the American Muslim community votes uh, will be evident the same way it was evident in the year 2000 in Florida. Uh, in Florida, many media reports and community leaders uh, believe that the American Muslim voters swung the votes uh, for the winner of that election. We have been talking about Florida Muslim voters in 2000, and we believe in the future uh, the media will talk about uh, 2016 Muslim voters, especially in the swing states, such as Ohio, uh, Florida, Pennsylvania, Virginia, the Carolinas, and New Hampshire. An award to the Muslim voters. The future of the United States may rest on your votes on November 8th. The future of your civil rights and civil li liberties may also rest on your participation or lack of participation in this year. Um, I usually don't thank uh, uh, you know, candidates, uh, but here I would like to thank Donald Trump for energizing the Muslim community in an unprecedented fashion. Uh, I have never seen such energized Muslim community uh, who is willing to vote, planning to vote, and that will turn out on the day of the election. I have not seen that in 20 years. And I believe that's due to the fact that certain candidates have inserted the Muslim community in the forefront of this election. Uh, the Muslim community feels the brunt of Islamophobia and the number of discrimination that's increasing, the hate crimes, the acts of vandalism. The Muslim community feels the heat, feels the, the, the brunt of this propaganda against them but also they understand that it is important for them to express themselves. And they realize that also their votes are their voices. And that's why we believe that the Muslim community will have unprecedented uh, turnout on, in this election. Regardless of who will win, the Muslim community past November 8th will continue to be engaged in the civic process, and we will engage any and every administration regardless of who will be the winner on November 9th. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to introduce uh, Sister Kristen uh, Jermesic. Shremsky. Uh, uh, Kristen Shremsky will be uh, uh, presenting the American Muslim for Palestine. Hi, my name is Kristen Shremsky. K-R-I-S-T-I-N-S-Z-R-E-M-S-K-I. -I -E I'm the Director of Media and Communications for the American Muslims for Palestine. So I'm here today actually to talk about the, the right or the privilege of voting. And that's why we're so appreciative of the effort of the US CMO and CARE and other organizations across the country who have joined together to make sure that our community gets registered to vote. People have, men and women have fought and died to give us the privilege to vote. I've been voting since I was 18. 
years old. It's something that I take very, very seriously. Uh, this year, my youngest daughter is voting for the first time, so it's a major milestone in our family. One of the biggest reasons why this voter registration drive this year was so important is because we want to show our youth and our community that civic engagement is the way to be to show that we're part and parcel of this country. Because to tell you the truth, personally, I'm really sick and tired of having to come to press conferences time and again to prove that I'm American and to talk about how American I am and so forth and so on. When we organize, as we are doing, and we increase the number of Muslim voters, as we're able to vote in blocks and swing elections, what's, we're going to see the cessation of Islamophobic rhetoric coming from political candidates. Right now, it's, it's acceptable, and it's not just Donald Trump. But you look at campaigns from four and eight years ago, look at the things Newt Gingrich said, Gingrich said and others. It's open season on Muslims. It's a season of fear, creating fear. You look at the other side of the aisle, and Hillary Clinton and even President Obama are saying that, oh, thinking that they're being welcoming, well, American Muslims are welcome here as long as they're going to be on the front line, lines and be our eyes and ears. Well, you know what? Thank you for welcoming to me to my own country. I was born and raised in Michigan. Everybody here belongs to this country. And we have a lot more value to prove and a lot more value to this country than just being on the, the eyes and ears of the surveillance programs the government is inflicting upon our community. So when we organize to vote and we, and we start voting in blocks, these things are going to start falling away. There's going to be more of um, an acceptance that people are going to start seeing that Muslims are here to stay. We are not going anywhere. We are proud of who we are. And registering our community to vote is one way to ensure that this is going to move forward positively. And we're going to take our place among all other Americans who are exercising our privilege, our high privilege, the thing that makes this country really stand out on election day. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Kristen. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Zahab Bukhari, who is the, uh, from the uh, uh, Islamic Circle of North America and also the national uh, chairman of the One America campaign of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Zahid Bukhari, uh, Z-A-H-I-D as David, Bukhari, B-U-K-H-A-R-I. I'm the executive director of ICNA Council for Social Justice. Uh, this campaign, we uh, decided in December after a National uh, Muslim uh, Leadership Summit in uh, Washington area, uh, D.C. area, that we will be having this One America campaign. And target was uh, fixed that we will have a million voter registration drive. We, have, we will have National Open Mosque Day. So Alhamdulillah, I think in, during the whole, almost a uh, year, uh, 10 months, uh, we were uh, able to have this One America campaign with the website and all those activities which uh, uh, Brother Osama just mentioned that. So we, uh, we achieved that, uh, those targets. So there are four stages, I very briefly, uh, we worked. The first is this uh, one million voter registration drive. Although, according to the national data, still Muslims' numbers are less. Because nationally, uh, American population is uh, 324 million. And the la very latest data is uh, telling us that 201 million we have registered voter. This year, I think maybe mo more 17 uh, million more Americans they got registered at this election cycle. <coughs> So if we accept the Pew estimate about Muslim population, although we have very strong reservation about that estimate, that is that Muslims are 1% uh, of the Muslim, uh, American population. So the logically, among the registered voters, we should also be 1%. One, uh, one so it should be 2 million Muslim registered voters. So, but we are not claiming 2 million, because there's still a lot of work is going on, and there are a lot of other uh, 
means uh, there are refinement in the, all these uh, su suggestions. So we are seeing more than one million, but I think when, when we will have the exact estimate, I'm very confident that we should be almost reaching 1.5 million registered voter. But then the work will continue, maybe the next election cycle and next election cycle, we will have more than two million and uh, those uh, number, according to at least the Pew uh, research population data although we have reservation about that. That's the first stage we done. Second is the early voting, and now Muslims are participating. In my city, I live in Frederick, Maryland. First time, we had two meetings, one with the congressman, and we have early meeting brunch and the, and the, and the breakfast in the, in the mosque, another brunch in the house, and then people go to the, for the early voting. Third is the get out, uh, out, the, means get out the vote uh, campaign. Means the case already started, Muslim community already they are starting everywhere all uh, this campaign and then the polling day. But more than that, I think Muslims are also ready to be engaged in the next level after the polling. And that I uh, talked to the, our uh, congressman uh, in Frederick, Maryland. I made that right now what is going on in all these de debates we, we have seen. When Muslims are being discussed, even among Democrats and among Republicans, or, or even I mean, that is the paradigm of terrorism and security. We like to go beyond that uh, paradigm. And there are three areas, very briefly. One is that Muslims are so professional and talented youth we have. We have professional in our field. They should be involved in the process. And the political parties, they should involve them. Second is that they should also be involved in the policy debates. We have the best expert in every field. So it should not be only terrorism and security, but they should also be involved in the policy debates. And when we are saying policy debates, not only the Muslim issue of the job discrimination or hijab. No, I'm saying the American domestic and international issue, they could be involved. And the four, and another level also is that the, for, the, for the relationship with the uh, Muslim world, I think the best asset the American government should have, that is the Muslim community, the leadership. And they, they, that leadership could be the bridge between America and the Muslim world. So we love that ultimately Muslims should be going beyond that paradigm of terrorism and security and should be involved in those issues. Thank you very much. Next, I would like to invite uh, uh, Brother Mazen Mukhtar, the Executive Director of the Muslim American Society. Thank you all, alhamdulillah. I thank God for being here among you today. I think this election has been unique in many ways, but the real work and the real interesting work happens beyond the election. We are looking forward to seeing the Muslim community involved in every locality, in every school district, in every, every, every legislature, involved at every level, not just through a four-year election cycle, but between cycles as well. Involved not only by voting, but by participating and active participation, participation in shaping the future of the United States. As I said, this election has been interesting. It has mobilized many Muslims who were not mobilized before, and we are looking forward to mobilize the rest, and we are looking forward to making a big impact in the United States. So I join my uh, colleague who thanked uh, Donald Trump for helping make this happen. But uh, in truth, we as a Muslim community, we have a lot to offer. We have a lot of work to do to make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Uh, Brother uh, Mir Masum Ali from the Muslim Ummah of North America. Thank you very much for today. Good morning. Thank you all our uh, partners of USCMO. Muslims in this country are part of this country. Muslim came this country not today. It came before America was born. Muslim in this country is part of this uh, election not only because Donald Trump or uh, Democrat Party. This, this uh, Muslim are here to stay and Muslim who has to contribute are contributing. We would like to thank you very much for the election four years of each year, this time. But we participate in local election. To participate, to get the rights of Muslims, we have to involve local elections. Local elections are the one who is giving the benefits of local rights of the Muslims. I will appreciate all people, 
all Muslims are joined together to hand together and for the betterment of this country. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce Sheikh Ahmed Mbarak from the uh, New York Shura Council. Uh, good morning. <clears throat> My name is Sheikh Ahmed. C H E I K H space A H M E D, last name Barak, and B A R E C K. I represent the Shura Council of New York. And New York now, as you know, is the home of the largest Muslim community in any state in the United States. And um, I'd like to emphasize two things. The first one that the fever of the election in New York is like never before. The one America campaign and the presidential election environment, in addition to the fact that it was in New York where imams were shot dead, it was in New York where babies kicked around in their strollers. It was in New York where women hijabs or veils were set on fire. The New York community is at the center of the uh, struggle against Islamophobia and its ramifications. The one America campaign helped us in New York. I go from mosque to mosque to mosque and from community to community trying to register people. It helped us engage our communities civically. And we hope that we'll carry on this energy to local elections, as everybody emphasized, because we are more affected by local policies local uh, public officials who come out against us, and worse, local law enforcement. We were, a couple of months ago, so happy that we have a settlement between the Muslim community and NYPD around the Muslim surveillance in New York, and now we proved wrong. We thought that's the best shot we can have. The court came on Monday out and said, no, guys, you are not protected. I, the judge, reject this settlement because I don't feel that the Muslim community is protected. <laughs> we were wrong. The second thing is to the Islamophobes and to those who are trying to create uh, uh, the European or the Middle Eastern scenario in the United States. And we want to send a very strong message to them that our response to Islamophobia is the ballot, is casting the ballot, is voting. No one will squeeze our youth, our communities to violent extremism. We will vote, that's our response. We will get engaged locally. We will change policies that harm our communities in the United States and our Muslim world abroad. Thank you very much.